Well, it's pretty easy to give a gift and pretty hard to give a good gift. Now, Nate has a lot of ideas about giving good gifts and my wife Kelly is really good at it and it's not really one of my strong suits. But as I've been thinking about giving gifts and talking to Nate about it, some things have popped out which might be helpful if you're coming up at a time of the year when maybe gift giving could be important. The first idea is about books and reading. And I don't know, maybe you've received a book. I know I've received a book and it's great if it's the right book. But the only way to ensure that it's gonna be the right book is to give a few books. Books don't cost much now. So give a little handful of books. Maybe sort of a cross section of something that seems entertaining and something that seems enlightening and maybe something that could be considered a classic. I mean, if you give three, it's likely they're gonna read at least one, right? And reading a book's a wonderful experience. And so this morning I've been trying to think what three books would I recommend? And well, it's impossible, isn't it? Books are, they're as varied as people. And how do you recommend just three people? But if I was gonna pick three right now out of this stack, I know that the, the screw tape letters would be one, C.S. Lewis, the screw tape letters. I recommend that like a lot. I just read Empire of the Summer Moon by S.C. Gwynn, and we did a little book review on our second channel, so that's on my mind. But I, I've got a great book here, The Anatomy of Peace, Resolving the Heart of Conflict. You can't go wrong with Tolkien. I mean, Tolkien's a home run, a home run for almost anybody. And have any of you read this uh, alive, the story of the Andes survivors back in the 60s, I think? Whether it's a classic or just entertainment or something that is profoundly worthwhile to you, give them a handful of books. So the next idea is gonna feel like you're taking a chance, but you're not, and it's a musical instrument. And instantly we put the brakes on because what if they're not musical? Well, what if they just don't know that they're musical? You can do that with something as simple as a penny whistle, right? I mean, or a recorder. We all played recorders in fifth grade probably. Or maybe you step up and you get a chanter for a set of bagpipes. Cy gave me this. Cy plays the bagpipes. You didn't know that. I used to think I had an interest in playing the bagpipes until I tried to make a chanter make music. So a chanter is half of a set of bagpipes. You make the melody on the chanter and you've got the bag under your arm squeezing air that you've put into the bag out over the drone reeds. So that's how you get the dissonance of the the melody squealing along in the treble register and the drone giving that sort of characteristic threatening sound that a bagpipe makes. Did you know that a bagpipe was a war instrument? But anyway, I mean, there are, there are other ways to give the gift of music a harmonica. I mean, almost anybody can learn to get a little music out of a harmonica. And who knows what kind of a trigger that might press for someone who had never thought of it before. So this funny looking thing, did you know that they made trombones out of the same material they make garden hoses out of and uh, waste and vent systems in houses. They make plastic trombones. It's called appropriately a pea bone. And I take this if I'm going camping or I can ride around behind the seat of the truck because of course you never know when you're going to want a trombone when you're camping. But Next idea. Maybe you could set somebody up with everything they needed to enter a brand new hobby. Like, in my world, I automatically think of welding. It takes less money than you think to start somebody on welding as a hobby with everything they need. We've done a video on that. But just as an example, this is an auto darkening hood, kind of a starter level. You can get that on Amazon for like 35 bucks, not much money. And everything else can be purchased for not much money. But maybe money's the driver. Maybe you set them up with knitting. You can get a skein of yarn and a crochet hook or a set of knitting needles for very, very little. And there's no limit to how far someone can take knitting as a really highly skilled and rewarding craft. What about candle making? What about food dehydrating? You can get a dehydrator and some recipes for beef jerky or dried apples. Who knows what someone could learn to do and really enjoy doing if they just had the initial boost of all the gear they need shows up in a particular moment. And if that coincides with a fit of ambition that they may be having at that point in their life, maybe they're off on a whole new rewarding um, hobby or field of interest. Before I launch into what you are expecting me to launch into, which is tools, 
let me talk about a principle of gift giving that can be pretty helpful. And that is, once you identify something that you're really sure the person is going to be able to engage with, or that they would like to have, or perhaps that they already have something like it, find something a little better, or a little more brand recognizable, or a little more versatile than what they might buy for themselves. Now that doesn't have to translate to a lot of money. The idea is that you just pick something out that is better than what they would settle for when they are stocking their own shelves, whether it's shoes or coats or levels or automobiles. I mean, whatever it is that you are thinking of spending for them, make sure it's just a little nicer than what they would do for themselves. Maybe, perhaps, you know a tradesman who's got a very inexpensive and slightly questionable aluminum I-beam type level. Okay, that's all right, it's working, but maybe you can just step up a little bit and get them another level, perhaps identical in function and more reliable and more durable in form. Does that make sense? Maybe you can just buy a little nicer level that's a better version of the same thing. Or maybe, check out this torpedo level. Now you can buy a plastic torpedo level for a buck 89 and it's worth every penny. Or you can spend a little more, a lot more, and get a solid aluminum magnetic lifetime torpedo level. Anybody who's got a cheap torpedo is gonna to be happy to have a nice torpedo level. You see the connection? You see the certainty? You see how that is gonna be useful and appreciated? Or you take it all the way to the max and just get them a bigger version of a tool that they are bound to like. Or maybe you demonstrate some tradesman sophistication and if it's a mason you're buying for, you don't buy him an aluminum level, an aluminum level at all. You get him a nice crick wood level, which is a mason's tool of choice. Anyhow, it's just a concept. Do something a little nicer for the person than they would automatically do for themselves. They're gonna like it. Before we step away from tools, if you know somebody that you think already has every tool, if they don't have a pack out, okay, this is a pack out. Milwaukee makes these things, and it doesn't matter what the trade is, it doesn't matter if it is a seamstress or a serious quilter, this thing is handy for everybody. It's tough, it organizes, everything's right at your fingertips. Whoever you give this to is gonna fill it up with the stuff they use every day, and they're always gonna know where their stuff is at. So you can't miss with one of these. The last idea comes with a plan A and a plan B, and it's this. Plan A is find something old and restore it for someone. Now, ideally, it would be something that has sentimental significance to them. Like for instance, that belonged to my grandfather. If I shine this up and give that to my dad, okay, now that might have real significance to him. Plan B is find something that the person would like to restore. So I could visualize that one of my grandsons would enjoy restoring this hatchet. It's a Boy Scout finger chopper is what it is, and they probably would have a fine time working here in the shop rehafting that, sharpening it. I mean, so you see there's two different ways. You restore something for someone and it means something to them, or someone has the chance to restore something. I can tell you one of the next restoration projects that I'm gonna tackle is a hammer just like this, and I looked for it and failed to find it, but it belonged to my dad, was given to him by the guy that owned this, and now the S-Wing hammer's lost all of its wa leather washers and it's a pretty dilapidated excuse for a hammer. And one of these days, I'm gonna restore that thing, hopefully while my, while my dad can still appreciate it, and he will have a new and improved version of something that he had as a young man. Now a gift like that could go a long ways to making a holiday really memorable, couldn't it? For the giver and the receiver. So in any case, whatever the gift is that you're looking for, the more of yourself you can input into the giving of that gift, the more it's gonna to mean to the person that receives it. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.